everybody. I'm sorry we're a little bit late. <laughs> well, nothing like the internet falling over. One second to go live. You know, we had this countdown, 10, 9, 8, the music is blaring, the cool song is playing, I'm diving. And then technician back there says, I got no cameras, internet's falling over. It's like one of those. Something like when we were behind in the World Cup final. You know that feeling? Anyway, guys, I do apologize. Something happened. I don't know, the gremlins, the rats, something ate a cord. But we're back. We're back. We're back. So uh, welcome. And it's great to be along with you. Thank you for joining us, guys. And for those who are joining a little bit later, um, I hope you too are going to enjoy this. Um, we have got lots to get through, lots of hacks fun things, holiday vibes that can get you going, keep your garden going, and keep you going. Yeah, because some of us need that, you know, we need the distraction for when the family descends. Yeah, the family descends. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into that, but I feel your pain. Um, <laughs> I hope none of my family is watching. <laughs> Okay, anyway guys, let's see who's online. Um, uh, good morning, Andrea. Good morning from PE. Um, Wendy, good morning to you. Sharon, hello from Peter Maritzburg. Claire, um, from Strubens Valley. Yes, 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 we at Strubens Valley next week. Build a Strubens Valley next week, Saturday. See you there, guys. Book your seat. Phone in. Make sure they put a sticker, something, something, something. And remember, when you come to these things, guys, psh, you are going to have loads and loads of fun and there are lots of giveaways um there's there's always you know we just have fun and hopefully you do learn something about gardening um <laughs> good morning patsy uh felicity you're sitting in your garden watching oh oh bless you um uh bonnie good morning from hillcrest kevin good morning mr button um rena good morning from durbanville Durbanville, okay. Uh, Sonstral. Um, Ty, good morning from a cloudy Joburg. Yeah, your, your guys, we're going to talk about that just now. Um, Rosemary, good morning from Whitnam Retirement Village. Hey, guys. Man, beautiful part of the world that you live in and fantastic gardens created by the one and only maestro landscaper extraordinaire, Dr. Elsa Pooley. Man, um, one of my heroes. Absolute heroes. Um, Joy, good morning. Um, Renata Fisser, good morning, good morning. Um, Tracy, good morning from Hillcrest. Guys, it's lovely to have you all with us. Um, Tobacco, good morning. Brenda Lawrence um, from Mondior. Um, Naresha from Amams and Toti. Uh, man, guys, wow, this makes my heart so happy. Good morning, Tess. Um, Joy Gilbert um, from Windy City Retirement Village. <laughs> uh, um, Mabel, good morning. Enjoying with a, enjoying a cup of tea. A cup, a cup of tea and a lie down. But you can have your lie down after the live. Uh, <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Can you believe it's our last masterclass? Um, I don't know where the year's gone. But, you know, we work in the magazines. We work two, two three months in advance. Um, so kind of like uh, everything happens in a bit of a blur. And I was at the, I was actually telling the guys this morning, I was at the hire car company the other day and they made me write down the date. And I was like, I think the, the, the poor lady at the car hire company must have thought I was like just let out of a Lulu bin. I said, what do you mean this is the date? Well, what are you talking about? This cannot be the date. And uh, she's like, I think she's like, oh, you see that one? You see that one? She must go back. She must go back where she came from. So, uh, Jay, good morning from Peter Maritzburg. Priscilla, good morning from George, Cape Town. Um, oh, my goodness. Um, Jane, good morning from Ottery. Um, Ottery. Do I say Ottery? Ottery, that's right, in Cape Town. Um, Elise from Cape Town, from Paro. Uh, Maureen from Rissner. Guys, you are here. We are going to have a great time this morning. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Folks, for those of you who lived in, who lived, you still, you still do live there, um, who live in Gauteng, Johannesburg, Four Ways area, you um, had the most torrential, most devastating hailstorm um, in uh, the last week. 
Uh, we saw footage of it, like golf ball size stuff. Guys, obviously your gardens um, got affected. They got devastated. They are stripped down to bare, naked things. I understand. Allow yourself to cry. Please do. Because this is a mourning process. Um, and if people think you're mad because you're crying about it, tell them to go away. Um, okay, just tell them to go away. You're allowed to cry. You're allowed to mourn. You're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to go through all of those things because you are mourning a loss. Um, a loss of a garden that you have a very personal relationship with. Um, and plants that you have nurtured beyond, given mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, resuscitation to, and that you have traveled in your suitcase with, not from overseas, of course not, um, just within our borders, which is legal, and you have nurtured those plants. So guys, I get it. Please, here are some tips I want to give you in terms of the resurrection and how we go about it. Whatever you do, whatever you do, do not prune a thing. Nothing. Nothing. Do not prune a thing for the first two to three weeks. Loss that I learn. Leave it. Don't touch it. All I want you to do is go around the plants and any debris that has fallen. I want you to pick those leaves up and you're going to put those on the compost heap. Why do we want you to do that? Because remember, they've been shattered, they've been scarred. It's perfect breeding grounds. Now with the heat and the humidity that was coming through and you said you're having a cloudy day in Gauteng, which means you're going to have a bit of humidity. Perfect breeding grounds for fungal infections. So get all those leaves up, put them onto the compost heap. Next thing, I want you, what, what I would like you to do, get rotting compost, well manured compost. Um, if not, go and buy yourself a few bags of builders and put it around as a mulch on the soil to reduce the stress of the plant. Everything right now is about reducing the stress on the plant. Okay, got me. All right. As soon as you start seeing any new leaves, any new little leaves starting to shoot, because remember, your garden has just been dumped full of more nitrogen than any fertilizer could possibly ever give it. So your garden is actually going to spring back like it is on Bioplus. It, it's going to, the amount of nitrogen that in its purest form that comes from those hailstones is insane. So guys, and the next thing I want to say, do not fertilize. Do not fertilize with anything. Hang back, okay, hang back. What I do want you to do is the following. I want you to apply a fungicide. I really want you to do that. Um, something like uh, Copstar, Fungi Free. Um, I want you to apply a fungicide to the plants, especially those that have been wounded on the stems, um, that have been bruised. I want you to apply that because that is going to prevent any fungal infections from getting in there. The only thing that you are going to give them the only thing that you are going to give them is a bit of this. Guys, this, remember, is not a plant food. This is a plant conditioner. Um, it's called Kelpac. It is basically, um, it's, it's kelp that's being put through a process which is an anaerobic and it keeps all the nutrition. It's got important cytokinins and auxins, which are basically growth hormones and good plant nutrients, but they are not those N, P, and Ks. They are really, really good for stabilizing your plant. And anything that has a bit of a cough or a sniff or anything in our garden, in fact, even before we, we transplant, we dunk them into a solution of this. So this is what you can spray your plants with. You can mix it into your fungicide and you can apply that. That is all that I would do. All right, the flowers that have been smashed, yeah, the flowers that have been smashed, you can deadhead those now, okay, but you are not removing any foliage, because the foliage that is still left there, even although it's in shreds, is still going to be able to photosynthesize and produce energy for the plant, so, so that's, that's really important, okay, got it, okay, it's not that bad, in three weeks time, as soon as you see that foliage coming through, you're then going to give it a light prune, where those new leaves are, and guys, I promise you, it's going to come back with a vengeance, and it's going to look beautiful. So, relax. Take a chill pill. It's going to be okay. I've been through this. I cried. 
I, I, I cried, I howled, I whatever. I was Deborah depressed, seriously. Uh, day two, I kind of pulled myself back together and said, right, what's the game plan? What is the game plan? Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about how do we make our gardens look instantly beautiful for the holidays? Okay. There are so many hacks that we are going to share with you this morning. So many different ways. And the first one that I want to share with you is what we call the kind of the instant fillers, the instant fillers for beds. They're the plants that are coming right into flower right now. You'll find them at your local builders. They'll jump out at you. They're those ones that jump onto your trolley and for good reason this time because they are going to give you what I call real legs during the summer season. Um, the plants that I've chosen today are real tough nuts. You really can't kill them promise you, you really can't kill them. And they won't only be here for one season. Um, they are going to be here for a long, 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 long time in your garden. Okay, so let's talk about what they are. I'm going to bring you um, a few options up here because they are just too gorgeous, just too gorgeous. Okay, so we're talking gap fillers. Um, we're talking plants that are going to give you that instant um, that, that, that color that we are looking for. No, because everybody has, has a something. Everybody's got a, a, a hole somewhere in the garden. I mean, we all do. It, it, it happens. So, daisies. Guys, please don't ever forget the humble daisy. An amazing plant. Um, this one is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's a grand daisy. And you can see why it's called a grand daisy. I mean, this in a bed it's like instant filler, guys, instant, instant filler. Lots of sun, don't overwater it, um, and it's good to go. Okay, so that's it. Don't forget the daisies. Um, number two, Gora or Gaura. I don't care how you say it. This is the beautiful white, um, also called the butterfly plant. Remember, this is, this is a true perennial. It's going to get about yo tall in your garden, just under a meter. It's going to flower right through summer. When it's finished flowering, you get out your secateurs and you give it a really good hack. And I mean a really good hack. Down to here. Okay? Right down to here. And give it a bit of organic fertilizer and it's going to come away again for you. You also get a beautiful pink. I mean, it is like uh, Moulin Rouge pink. Moulin Rouge is pink, pink, pink. I don't want to say what other pink I think it is. It's pink. Um, and it's, it's called... Um, I think it's called Phasian pink, something like that. Anyway, it's pink. You can't miss it. Um, Gaura, Gora, whatever you want to call it, plant it. Um, I love the fact that, that when you have a little breeze and the butterflies love this plant. They love it. They love it. They love it. Other two plants that work exceptionally well with this as gap fillers, guys, are the Coreopsis. You're going to see them at your local builders now. They are two different colors. They're called the Upticks. And look at that combo. I mean, if I start putting these together, we are really talking some beautiful gardens here. And remember, yellow, punchy, draw attention, happy. Yellow is the color of happiness. And, and that's what we want. And these plants, do not underestimate the growth of these plants because they will grow. They will widen. Each plant will get to about 30, 40 centimeters in width. Um, and as a combo, I mean, there we're talking really some nice plants. The other one I want you to look out for is, of course, the beautiful salvia. Um, this is salvia mystic spires, a really stunning plant. Uh, low growing. You can keep it lower if you want, but this is just coming into flower. It's looking fantastic and it's going to flower right through the November, December, January, February, March. You're then going to give it a light pruning and then it flowers again for you in autumn. But what I want to show you is, look, if we put that at the back of the bed and then we put a couple of these in the front. So yummy. So yummy. Oh, I've got heart. I've got all of that. I mean, that's really nice. That is really, really nice. Okay, so those are exceptional plants. Really, really exceptional plants, guys. Um, I, I, cannot, I cannot even stress anymore how we've had, um, well, all of these are in our garden. Um, and they go on year after year after year. They just get a good hard pruning um, and away they come again. 
Another great plant, which you're going to see all over at any builders that you go into in anywhere in South Africa, of course, are the coleus. We've spoken a lot about coleus, guys. Yusuf's a cleat, um, beautiful colors, can grow in the full sun, can grow in semi-shade, excellent in pots. I just, I cannot get enough of them. I, I really can't. Um, and at full sun even, full, full sun. But the, the combos that we're playing with in the garden at the moment um, are these. So we've got these which have been in the garden. They're in their third year now, I think, looking amazing. And then we've put a few of these next to them. Ooh, caramba, knock my socks off. Beautiful, yummy, yummy, yummy. I mean, we've got, so, so red on its own, it's like red lettuce. Red lettuce looks bleh in a garden. Red lettuce growing in a garden, or even if you just put red lettuce in a salad, looks dead. It really does. Red lettuce is only grown to make other things look gorgeous. Please know that. Red lettuce is only grown to make other things look gorgeous. And um, yeah, okay, so another plant, which you are also gonna find is this beauty. Now, I call this my avatar plant. Um, oh, man, okay, so you know this plant. Um, you've seen it uh, around in, in, at your local builders, but this is a new one. This is called Anigoxanthus. It's called the kangaroo's paw, um, but this is a spectacular new variety. And I want you to look. Mason, come in here. Come, just come close. And look at this. Oh, look, look, look at your eyelashes. Look at them. The most beautiful, long, gorgeous eyelashes. Look at the red. Oh, it's like outer worldly. I'm like, it's completely outer worldly. And they come in these amazing colors. And look at this. Look at this mauve. Look at her eyelashes. She's like a dancing girl. Um, that is just, I mean, these are, these are seriously false eyelashes. But look at them. That lime green with the purple just blows my hair back. It, it's it's otherworldly. It's avatar. Um, and I love this plant because... It, like, it awakens that child in me that's probably permanently there, but never mind. It, it's a beautiful plant. Um, it's from Australia, Anigoxanthus, kangaroo's paw. Incredibly tough, hot, dry, sunny. We've got these in a spot in the garden that only get water from the sky. It's in the grass garden. We've used them amongst grasses. They're beautiful, um, really tough. But geez, as a show-off plant, ha, as a talking point, oh, caramba. It's just lovely. Uh, it really is lovely. I mean, yeah. Look, look at those things. It's the eyelashes. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, nature, nature just um, uh, continuously, continuously amazes me and, and makes me so humble and, and knowing that I am but a mere speck, a mere grain in the sand. Um, because these guys. <laughs> okay, get over yourself, Tanya. Right, okay. Um, what else can we use? I think I've touched on, on the plants that I want you to use as fillers. Now, you are going to find lots of other plants that you can use. Of course, anything bedding, annuals, so whether it be salvia, whether it be portulacaria, get them and pop them in. Now, what I want you to do, this is a secret trick, okay? If it tells you you've got to plant them 30 centimeters apart, and the family's arriving next week. Okay, a bit early, I know. I would start charging them if they arrived early. And if you are gonna plant them a week before Christmas, I don't care when you're gonna plant them. But guys, this is what I want you to do. If it says plant 30 centimeters apart, hey boy, ignore that. You then double up your spacing. You plant them really close, like, like that close. So they look like they've been growing, okay? And then when they've gone, the people, <clears throat> I want to use another word, but I'm not going to. When the people have left, you then take every second one out. 
Okay, and then you can move it to another spot in the garden. So you actually then plant them in their real spacing that they need. Okay, nice, it works. Have I done it? Yes, of course I've done it myself. Um, it's a trick, it's a hack, it does the job. Um, but do remember to move them, move them around, okay? Okay, very, very important. Okay, let's talk about pots, guys, because everybody's got a spare pot lying around. Come on, it's, it's still outside the back door. You hid it in the cupboard, it's lying in the garage. It's round the corner. At the moment, it's full of water, probably breeding some mosquito lava. Um, it's there. It's there. You all have them. And if you don't have a pretty pot, you've got a plastic pot. Yes, because we bought something and we potted it out and we've got a plastic pot. Okay, so what do we do with them? Guys, first of all, I want to talk about the... And, and I want to say this if you've got 10 minutes. If you've only got 10 minutes. This is not a two-day game. Okay, and this is not a 2020 series either. It's shorter. Okay, it is much, much shorter. So what I want you to do is think about this. Mace, you're going to have to come around the corner here a little bit for me, please. Or I actually, I might bring it up here. So if you've only got a few minutes, guys, 10 minutes, you've got a pot, right? A pot, whatever was in it died, went to heaven. Okay, or you're moving it along. You're going to go and buy yourself three sticks. Okay. Three sticks, one, two, where's my third one? Three sticks at your local builders. It's called a dropper, a fence dropper. And all you're going to do is you are going to put them in like a wigwam kind of, kind of thing, okay? Because you want them to balance. If you are nervous about the children's or the dogs, then what I recommend that you do then is you actually put a bit of gravel in the bottom. And you can put it on in a garden bed. So say the shrubbery is this high. Put it on a brick or a rock because you're not going to see it. So you can lift this pot up, lift it up. So it becomes a focal point, a focus punt. Okay, we can take it one step further. We're going to get some, oh man, and I've seen this and I love it. And I've seen friendship poles made like this, which are just too gorgeous. Okay, but what you do is you take these poles and guys, even if you've got some old PVC piping lying around the garden, I'm not lying around the garden. It shouldn't be lying around the garden. Um, you know, from a leftover project or whatever. You take some of this, and I um, uh, hope I don't um, uh, asphyxiate everybody in the studio, but you give it, a, give it a, a spray paint. And all of a sudden, ooh, 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 ooh. We have got something really cool. Something really funky. 10 minutes, guys. That was one minute. Simple and easy. Okay, do it. It's fun. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, what I was using was a bit of um, Rust-Oleum. Guys, you can spray this thing on anything. Um, I, I'm sure that you could even spray it on a person of choice. Um, if you wanted to, <laughs> seriously, you can spray it on plastic, on wood. On almost anything because it comes with the built-in primer which just makes life so much easier so we love it uh, and I promise you swear we have got a cupboard next door that is full of rust-oleum it so that when we want to paint something okay all right so that's that let me get this out the way um so that um and what these guys over here oh la la I are breaking things which is quite normal okay so that's sticks and pots Right, next up. So that's a pot just in the garden as an objet, as a, as a thing, okay? Got it. Next up is faking pots. Come on, faking pots, guys. This has to be the ultimate of faking pots. So, so, look at this beautiful man. It's been growing in here forever. It looks amazing, this hydrangea. It's hydrangea time. Christmas time, hydrangea time. Holiday time, hydrangea time. And you walk into builders and there are just so many, they're like oozing. You're like, you don't know which one to choose. Um, they're these beautiful pinks, these amazing whites. Um, I mean, really, they, they deserve to be shown off. And why not just tell a little white lie along the way? Mm, you know, well, you choose whatever you're going to do. But... This one has been growing in here for over a year and it's looking amazing. Not. <laughs> so look here. Come and look inside here. Come. OK. 
Okay. Out comes the plant. Look inside here. Yeah? Look inside. Look, 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 look inside. All we did was we took the pot, we took another plastic pot, shoved it in there, okay, and put the plant in there. And you can hide it, you can disguise it in so many different ways. Whether it's with um one trick, a bit of newspaper, take a bit of newspaper, stuff it down the sides, a bit of um bubble bubble wrap, you know that stuff? Okay, so you can still water it. Um, you can then put a bit of bark around it. Make it look authentic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then when the holiday's over, you take the plant out and you go and plant it in the garden. And you will have hydrangeas in your garden. But in the meantime, you've got some fake pots. Okay. All right, another trick. This way. Um, okay, so here. Um, I need my plant. If we're talking wow factors, guys, um, I was at my local builders two days ago and I came across, okay, now I don't like plastic pots. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm going to be straight out and honest with you. I, I, I don't have the words. Okay. Yet, I might take that back because yet I found these and I really like them. I was like, I can, I can live with you. I, I seriously, I can live with you. You, 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 you. You're quite sexy. I like the colour. It's, it's not, it's not gaudy. It's not overbearing. It, it's, it's quite slick. So anyway, I thought, right, okay. Now, how do I get around this? You know, what do I do? Well, we fake it. We fake it. We fake it. We fake it. And how do we fake it? Well, we fake it like this. We take another pot, and we put that in there, and then I pop in some coleus. All right. Um, because, oh, caramba, and you see, I'm leaving them in their actual pots. I am planting nothing. I'm taking nothing out. I am not using potting soil. I am simply just taking these guys, and what you have to do is, one of them, you have to do this too. Okay, you, you're going to have to squash it. It's okay. Don't stress. The plant's going to live. I promise you it will. You're going to squash it, okay, and you're going to grab it there, and you're going to pull these two forward, and in it goes. And... Oh, well, look at that. Ah, and then when we frou froued our stuff around it, oh, my word, look at that. Jeez, I am such a good gardener. Yeah, I've been gardening for years. And look how beautiful it is. Instant gratification, guys. At the end of the holidays, pop them out, pop them into the garden, and um, all is good. And all, all is good. Okay. Another way that we can get around things is like this. And um, just stay where you are there, Mace. I'm going to come to the table. Um, guys, this is one of our favorite, favorite tricks. And, uh, <laughs> you know, whether it's a pot that you're trying to disguise and, and make like it's been growing there forever, you know, it's in its fourth season. <laughs> uh, whatever it is, everybody's at some point in their life has tried to grow a hanging basket. I know you have. Um, I really, I do know that you have. Uh, so you're going to unearth your hanging basket from the back of the shed or wherever. You are going to buy a hanging basket. You are then going to take off these little things because this is a worthy investment. I promise you, um, I promise you all over again. And you are either going to take it and put it in here, but I choose to do it like this. So you turn it upside down, give it a bit of a wiggle and oh. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Never! Oh, Margaret, how many, how did you plant up that basket? <gasps> well, you know, Dorothy, Dorothy, I followed those instructions and I watched that YouTube video of that, like, that girl on TV and she also does some of those videos for boulders and I followed all her steps and, I mean, look at this plant. It's just, it's gorge. It's Gorge, and, and I followed the steps and I can be a gardener too. Life. <laughs> Life. <laughs> but come on. Isn't this such a cool hack? Um, I mean, God, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. So look at my hanging basket. I'm so proud of it. I'm going to hang it up here. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Just, just do remember to fill in the soil. 
<laughs> round the edge, please, <laughs> so that if somebody does come as a close, closer inspection, they're not going to see this thing hanging around, because then you're a dead giveaway, guys. Like, I mean, then, then you are what they call, um, what's they say, cash? What? The cash is funny, cool off. What's it? Like, the horse is bolted. What's the Afrikaans say? The coolest dear the kerk. What, whatever that means, I know that you beautiful Afrikaans people will understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. So that's another really, really cool hack that you can do. Um, and uh, I love it. And if you've got a pot that needs a roo, you take that hanging basket and you put it into a pot because hanging basket plants are generally more mature. They're more floriferous. They've got more flowers because they've had a bit more time to establish. So use it. Use it to your advantage. Okay, next I want to talk to you about um, plastic pots. Okay, so I said to you that all of you, you've pro I, I, I guarantee you've got them. Come on, man. You've all got a plastic pot hanging around. It's one of these. It's one of these that you that you bought a plant in, a chrysanthemum, a something. Um, you might have bought them to become the next um, propagator. You are planning on taking lots of cuttings. They're somewhere in the garage, they're somewhere in your gardening shed, and they are around. What do we do with them? What do we do with them? Some of you have got hundreds. Um, and these are quick hacks that don't take a lot of time, and they're really inexpensive as well. So we're going to go back to our rust -oleum, okay? Invest in a few tins. Seriously, invest in a few tins. So we turned that into that. Funky banana. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Right. What do we put in it? What do we put in it? Well, mm -hmm. options are endless. Whether you're going to take a little, um, you're going to put some sand in here and you're going to pop in some leaves, something. You can plant it up. But this is, here are the possibilities of, of what we can do. Um, and I want to bring all my paraphernalia here because I am going to make a terrible mess at this point. And that's the best part about gardening. Um, and I, I am really, guys, if, if you know me, I'm really not good at this arty thing. Um, I really am not. I tend to, to make more destruction wherever I go um, than anything else. But above all, I actually do get to have a lot of fun. Um, and I want to show you a few tricks. Um, and I'm going to, what am I going to do? What color am I going to use? I'm going to, I actually don't know. I'm not certain yet, but never mind. Okay, so there are a few things that we can do. Um, and I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off with, okay, so there, spray, 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 go wild. Go wild, go wild, go wild. Any different color. And remember that you can also use on an old cement pot. So you've got an old cement pot, you can also just give it a bit of a wipe down um, and, and give it a spray. You can also get this stuff. It's called pot paint. Fired earth pot paint, guys. And this transforms. It's got a lovely texture. That's what I like about it. It's got a bit of a texture on it. Um, and once again, quick sticks, easy. You can just put it on, slap it onto something on a old cement garden bench, you can just put it on, okay. The other thing that is also quite cool, but this is where things get a bit scary, is you can buy these little stencils. Look, they're new, new. You can also make your own stencil, okay, because we've all got a plot, we've all got a pot, okay. So whether you're taking this one that you've just pimped, okay, and now you want to put some decorasi on it or something, or pimp it, or whatever you want to do. You can take this, put it on. Now, you do get some special glue that you can put on for the stencil and wada, wada, wada. Um, but, you know, you can, or you can just use some press stick, you know, to stick it down and some masking tape. And then, <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna use, feel like one of those, what are those dancers? Spanish dancers. Da -da 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 -da. Um, so all we're going to do is this. Oh, and please, the, these lids, guys, just, just, sorry, just. They've got a little thing here. You squeeze it and you pull it up. Okay. 
And what we're going to do is, when you do this, I am going to do it over here because I don't want my computer to get it. Um, you want to hold it away. Little bits, little bits, little bits, little bits, little bits, little bits. Okay, little, little bits. I probably should have put a bit more tape on it, but never mind. Life goes on. I'm sure I can just wipe it off. You can put a few coats on, but then you've got to wait for it to dry. And uh, on a live, we don't have time for drying. There is no drying time. So uh, give it a bit of a how's your father. Um, I need a lappy. I did have a lappy here somewhere. Uh, you can wipe this off if you get it in time. And FYI, I would most certainly um, put a bit extra on it because now I've got a tie-dye kind of look. Um, but never mind. Come, let me show you. I can't do this at, at normal pace because I apparently I've got 30 minutes, 30 minutes left to do everything. So all I'm going to do is pull this thing off here. It's not going to be perfect. I do know that, but this is about the idea, guys. So uh, get this guy off. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. And there it is. You can do anything. Okay, it's a bit smudged, yes, because I was in a hurry, but you get the idea. You can do anything. You can do anything, guys. Absolutely anything. Um, so that can go on one side, and this can go here. Um, maybe I'm not so good at stenciling after all. <laughs> okay, but I have... What I do want to show you is this. And um, guys, pots. Old pots, new pots, whatever they are. Um, we've got them, we've had them, we have them lying around. And I am going to do this. I just want to get my piece of paper. Oh, excuse my derriere. Um, all right. And I want to show you what we can do with this. So I don't care how old it is, how broken it is, even if it's got um, some cracks in it. It's lying around. I know you've got them. Everybody has got them. So instead of going out to buy a new pot, um, we're going to take something like this. It's got a few scuff marks. Uh, it's got a crack or two in it. It's not looking so, so, so lacquer. Um, and, oh, I must close my laptop. Oh, I must move my laptop. No! Um, stop stressing. Um, okay, so this is what I want you to do. You're going to get some, there are various options here. So uh, the one is you just get some clear glue and you're just going to pop a few How's Your Father's on it. Okay. Um, anywhere you want, really. Uh, allow it to dry a little bit, and that's why I'm just putting it on now. Um, yeah, just let it... You got the idea. The more the merrier. Okay. The more the merrier. And then, whether you've got dried leaves, whether you've got beautiful magnolia leaves. Look at these. Oh, this is a magnolia leaf, and magnolias have this most insane, fluffy, soft, velvety fur on the undersides of their leaves. And they are so striking, so, so beautiful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some magnolia leaves and I'm just going to stick them on here. Um, now, you obviously need to apply a bit of pressure and allow it to stand for a while in order for it to stay here. Um, you could use super glue, but that's very dear. Um, so just use this and then you can overlap them. Uh -huh. And you get the idea of where we're going. But this is so much fun. You can create your patterns. You can change something that is ordinary to extraordinary. And that's really what I love. I'm actually going to do this whole thing now because I'm into it. Um, so whatever glue, um, I'm even sure that wood glue would do the job. Um, I've never tried it, but I'm even sure that that would do the job. So, you know, you can really go wild. Cool thing for the kids to get involved in. Um, just don't leave them unattended with the glue. Uh, <laughs> uh, but here we go. We can pop some leaves. Just give it a bit of pressure. There we go. Give it a bit of pressure. And, I mean, you can then really play around. And you could try all sorts of things. But I just, I love this. I love the texture of the magnolia. Now, come sit no, sit no, girl, Niels. We need Okay, 
So I obviously need to apply a bit more pressure on here, but you get the idea. You see what it looks like. Um, we put it down. I'm going to put it on the edge because I need to trim these at the bottom here. And you have got a really, really nice look. Um, you could take it one step further, and I am going to do that. I'm going to just chop these little guys off here. Right, chop these little guys off here. And if we put it down there, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at something that is... Come on, stick, baby, stick. There we go. It, it, it's fun. It's different. You can layer them. You can do whatever you want to do to them. Um, and it was an old pot. It needed a bit of a how's your father. Um, you can use brown leaves, green leaves, whatever you want. Just go for it. Okay, so what we could also do is this. I'm going to take the other side of the pot. And this is if you've got any kind of PVA paint lying around. Um that you found in, in, in the garage, because I don't want this. No, I don't want that paint. Um, I want to use some of this paint. So I, I'm not using, just relax. I'm not using a traditional um, uh, pot paint. This is some kind of acrylic stuff. So whether you had a, a tin of paint of, say, leftover wall and ceilings, yeah, wall and ceilings. Just any, just use it, you know, because we've all got these things. Um, there's always something left over in the gearage. So this is going to be a bit out there, um, so do bear with me. But it's quite not the colour I wanted to use. It's vicious. It's vicious, baby. It's vicious, it's vicious. Um, but I'm going to... Do this and this pot paint would be an example of using um, some leftover PVA. Does that make sense? Okay, some leftover PVA. All right, so let me just open this. I don't know why they make lids so difficult to open. Um, probably just for people like me. So what I want you to do is this. And guys, it's very, very simple. I want you to take a piece of cardboard. Okay, piece of cardboard. A brush, okay. We're going to give this a quick stir. Um, just a quick, 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 quick stir. Uh, no, it's okay. No, we're going to... Um, uh, another colour was, was handed to me, which is going to be less um, in your face. But pff, we're so in it now. Let's just keep on going, guys. Um, what I want you to do is take this, take a bit of the paint, and you're going to just do that, okay? And you're going to do that onto the board, onto your piece of cardboard, and... Why am I doing this? Because we're then going to be just doing some of this. Okay, so you can use a sponge, uh, you can do whatever, but the idea is that we are just going to give it a little, how's your father? Okay, and then we can take something else. <gasps> oh, it's going to be vicious, baby, vicious. Um, and we can then just... Okay, so you can really, you can play. You can just simply play. And I really don't like this color. It is revolting. Um, but I will show you what we used it on earlier. So it's about not doing like the proper big, big strokes. It's about getting rid of all of the excess. Okay, get rid of all of the excess. So it's almost a dry brush. And then you can get whatever look you want. So you could then take a sponge cloth. Guys, yes, I know it looks like a bit of a pimp pot. It should be at the, the bottom end of the street where you don't like going, um, but you get the idea. Oh, does it look nice? Oh, I've got the heads up from the, the creative boss of the house. Ah! <laughs> well, I never, well, I never, miracles never cease. Ah! <laughs> um, Okay, uh, so painting plastic pots, guys. Um, whether we're going to put leaves on it, whatever we're going to do, just try it, try it. Don't be a ninny. Um, just go ahead and, and give it a try. Okay, a couple of other things I want to show you, um, and it's also kind of on the pot side, is this. Now, let me just close this before I cause an absolute drama here is the following. So, 
Um, we're going to stick with kind of the pot theme, and uh, this is where I want to take you. And But before I get there, actually, let's do this. No, no, I'm sticking where I was. Um, so if you have bought, and if you have bought a, let's say, a Phalaenopsis, okay, one times Phalaenopsis orchid, beautiful, come on, everybody gets these, Phalaenopsis, called the moth orchid, um, uh, how on earth do you keep it alive, guys, I've got a whole entire video dedicated to that on the Builders YouTube channel, it's really nice and easy, um, have a look at it, you too can keep them alive, I promise you, you can, um, but what I want to show you is this over here, because so many of us get them, um, we either buy them like this or we buy them with one of these little instant pots. And oh my gosh, look at that. That had a bit of extra water in there. Um, or whether you've got a beautiful um, Monstera that we have. But you've got this. Do you see that? You see? You see that there. And then, yes, you can most certainly go and get a bit of sphagnum moss. Okay, oh, this beautiful green stuff, okay, you can buy it like this and then you can put that around it, yes. But then when it comes time to watering, guys, you've got to take this all off, then you've got to get the plant out, okay, because you know you can't water it in the pot or else it's going to drown, okay. So, so you can put that around, but anyway, I've had this thought, and I've had this thought for many, many months, and I've done nothing about it, so this morning I decided to do something about it. You buy yourself some of this landscaping fabric, all right? What you don't use, you then use um, in, the, um, in your garden. You, put, you use this for putting your stones on top of so your stones don't disappear. Okay, all right. So what I did was a, I cut a little square, take the little square, jump, 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 fold it, fold it, fold it, Work out your diameter on average. It's about there. Cut a circle. So we're going to cut it there. Okay. Right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Right. Let's just even this off here. Oh, this is also terribly messy, which is why I love it. Just love it. Okay. Then we open it up. All right. Open, open sesame. Now I've cut the bloody thing in half. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see why I'm so bad at crafting? <laughs> Let's try this again. Take two, as they said on the live. Um, <laughs> this is hysterical. Oh, guys, you know I'm only human. Oh, my word. Let's try this again. I don't think I'm going to try my folding thing. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? <laughs> oh, my word. Okay, I'm not doing that again. I'm doing it this way. I'm doing it my way, so I don't cut the thing into four pieces. Okay, anyway. Oh, my word. Caramba. Okay, we've got a circle. Pro oh, look at that. It's whole. Oh, oh the pressure. Oh, it's whole. Okay. <laughs> then in the centre, all right, I want you to cut a little, 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 little hole over there. Okay, cut the little hole in the centre. There it is. Got it, right? Then over here, I want you to do that, okay, just like that, right? Then we do this. This is the fun part. This is the messy part. Okay, let's move this said beautiful. And I am going to do it inside here because it's going to make a terrible mess, but this is the idea, guys. You take that. You put down your piece of, um, of weed control, whatever it is. Take your clear glue and you just go wild. Put your glue all over it. Put your glue all over it. Okay, you get the idea. Put your glue all over it. Take your moss. Take your sphagnum moss and stick it on. Stick it on all over. Because you end up with this. <gasps> yes, yes. And of course, it's got a little lip. And then you just take it and you put it around there. Oh, golly gosh. So the next time you have to water... It looks good, it looks amazing, it looks sexy, it looks finished. But the next time you've got a water, you're not pulling out bits of sphagnum moss that go all over. All you're going to do is just pick up your little lip like this, take off your little collar and take the plant out and off you go in water. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm going to be making hundreds of these and I think I might give them as stocking fillers. I might have to explain to the people or send it with directions. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness, guys. Anyway, let's put the little uh, the little guy back. All right. Um, another fun idea, which is a quite a cool little hack that you can do, um, and it's for um, the wildlife. So, guys, um, it's about keeping costs down because it's it's tough out there for everybody, and um, so it's summer. It's hot. We all know that it's hot, then we get rain. Um, we want to make sure that we keep our feathered friends um, happy as well. So you either take a little terracotta um, tray, which is a drip tray. You take a plastic one. You got a plastic one. You pimp it with a bit of Rust-Oleum. You take some pebbles, nice and easy. Take some pebbles, pop the pebbles in the base. There we go. Pop the pebbles in the base. Add some water, and we've got a cute little bird bath that you can put on a tree stump. You can put it on anything. Um, put it on a brick. Put it on a paver. Um, but here we've got a really cute little bird bath for in the garden. And the butterflies will come along and enjoy it too. And one more thing I'm going to tell you to do is this. Hold on. Let's just get that to the right there. Um, I do want you to take a few stones and because this is really important for the butterflies i want you to put a few little stones in here um, and for the bees so they've got a little resting spot so they can come along rest on there sip 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 and away they go quick easy simple guys and it looks quite gorgeous okay how do we take it to the next level very easy how do we take it to the next level how do we multi-use things because that's what life is about Life is about being able to take one thing and turn it into something else. Um, we take some Coreopsis and we float it around. That's pretty. I think I'm making some of those. I think, Megs, you might be getting it for Christmas. <laughs> okay. Um, right, guys, uh, come along this way. Now, hiding things. Oh, caramba. Yeah, I know. We've all got to hide things, but we're on a low budget. So there are a couple of ways of hiding things, guys. Number one, of course, trellis. Trellis. But trellis can be dear, okay? And if you've had a piece of trellis and it's been in the garden for a while and it looks like, like uh, it looks like it's been in the garden for a while, like a bit secondhand, you know, secondhand, buckled chassis, whatever, you get some of this paint, this beautiful fired earth. You use this, that color that we showed you is this piece of trellis here, guys. Before we painted it, I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how bad it looked. Look, look here, look here. It's even been eaten by something. I mean, seriously, but look, we painted it. Oh, and there it is. You can hide things. You can take some of that leftover weed guard that I showed you. You can attach it to the back. So you've got a solid black backing to really hide things nice and easy. Don't overcomplicate things, guys. Don't. Okay? Another way of working around with hiding things is, of course, my favorite. And you can also see that this is so used. I don't know how many times we've used it in the garden. Is this expandable trellis. Um, it can work as a barrier for children huh? and dogs. It can work as a trellis for plants and to hide dustbins and other unsightly things. Okay, nice and simple. Okay, uh, back a little bit in the corner here, trellising as well, um, instant, quick, easy, guys. A pot, a beautiful jasmine, a piece of trellis that you literally buy that's got some stakes in it, two stakes, whack it into the pot, Bob's your uncle, instant done, and it does the job. Okay, nice and simple. I want you to come along here because this is where I get to have the fun. Um, and this is lighting. Uh, folks, solar is so important. Never mind the load um, shed. Oh, we got another word for it. Load shedding. Um, things are expensive and we all can't afford generators and all those things. So uh, solar options are really, really good. And they're a quick, easy way to, to zhuzh up and to make pretty, just make pretty, okay? And they really are inexpensive. No, they're not going to be like an LED floodlight. No, 
They are for ambiance, okay? And they're for making pretty. So whether it's um, some of these beautiful uh, little um, solar lights, whether it's some fairy lights, and I actually am going to take these fairy lights, and Mason, we are heading across to the coleus pot, um, and I want to show you what to do with them, if I can just get, oh, and this thing comes with a stake. Uh, so that is not, you do not use this as security lighting, by the way, when you are heading out to go and find whoever's in your garden. Uh, this is to put into the soil, okay, with me? <laughs> yeah, you got me there. And while we're at it, cushions, fabrics, um, little bits and pieces that are not expensive, but they really aren't. And, and a simple arrangement of one or two change them up and away you go okay um but let's go back to our our beautiful um coleus and if we're talking festive christmas we hide that and we pop these guys in here and we have got a plant that i know after the holidays ooh, ooh, i've done something to these but you get the idea I'm now making a complete hash of this because I meant to put them in here. Um, but you get the idea. You pop them in here. You pop them in there. They work on a little battery. Some of them work on solar, which is even better. Um, but, oh, this is, this is like a rat's nest here. Um, oh, guess who's going to be untying these after this? Ugh. Okay, there we go. So we make pretty, put it on. And I know we have got something that will work. It will absolutely work. And after the holidays, I get to take these plants out and put them in the garden. And I get to reuse the pot. The, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. This is not now, it's for now. And it's for then. And it's forever after. Because that's what these plants can do. Okay, and that's how we've got to work around this. Okay. Um, guys, also what I want to show you is this over here. Um, as an alternative to a Christmas tree. And um, this is a little cupressus. It's called Cupressus Macrocarpa Gold Crest. Um, and oh, when you smell it, it's got the most beautiful lemony, lemony fragrance. It's stunning, it's stunning. A few little decorasis. We use the pot. We take a prettier pot cover, which could be anything from this. And we pop it in, right, and then we take our little pot sleeve that we made earlier and we put it around and, oh, do you not look too beautiful. There. And those are options. Once the holidays are over, you take the plant out, plant it into a beautiful pot, and away you go. Okay, a few more things, guys. A few more things. I know we're running out of time, um, but this is what I want to show you. Um, last but not least, what else can we do? Um, so, have a look at these here. Mace, I need you to come in here. Um, these are what I call succulent necklaces, and these are about... Gosh, I think three months old already. And uh, one wet, rainy Sunday afternoon, um, yeah, gardening was out. And I made a few of these. And look how beautifully they're growing. This could get used on your patio. It could get used um, around plants. It could get used just to decorate an area. You can make them as long, big, as short as you want. But here we have little succulent leaves. How do you make them? It's really easy. Um, if you come along here, um, I'm going to show you exactly how to make them. They are really, really easy. Look, it's in my sewing kit. Did you ever think that I'd have a sewing kit? Um, I only have a sewing kit for succulents. So what do we use? Dental floss. Why? Because dental floss does not get hot. Because if you, if you use wire, okay, using your wire, it gets really hot okay and then the succulents will actually burn and start decomposing um i have taken something out the kitchen um it's a little cheese knifey thing but 
Nobody knows that until now. Um, hmm, funny that, hey? So what you do is, is you take your dental floss and you can just pop it through there. And I'm going to tie a little knot. So you can see at the bottom of some of them, I've used a shell on the one. Um, the other, I just used a stick. Um, this is a little cheese knife. Oh, isn't that a cute idea? A cheese knife that I just drilled a hole through. <laughs> mm. Anyway, ask for forgiveness. Never permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, this is really easy, guys. You go around and you walk through the garden and you pick a whole lot of your succulent leaves and we've got a whole lot of them here and all you do is you literally just thread them through, thread them through to the end and you can change your textures, do a few big ones, then do a few small ones, and you can just thread away. And then all you do is pop them, hang them up into a spot so you go wild. I mean, this can be very cute with that little thing hanging at the end. And you hang them into a spot that gets good light, good, good light, okay? Good light, but not direct sun. Even in, like on a patio, ambient light, semi-shade. Hang them up, and every now and then, whenever you remember, you just go with a little misting spray, psh, 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 give them a little misting, and um, that's it. And then, then, the next step that you do is once they're like this, um, you are then going to, <laughs> this is the fun part, you then get to take these off, and you can either unravel the whole thing, or you get to take one off, okay, and then you get to plant it. You plant that little bubba. Okay, you plant them just like that. And then you've got new bubbas coming. So it's fun. It's inventive. It's creative. Um, and make them for your aunties. Make them an Echeveria Nicholas. Um, they'll wear it to Santa. True story. Um, and it's a necklace that grows. Ah, oh, guys, sure. Where's the hour gone? I don't know, but but we're up. We're up, guys. Um, and uh, remember, 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 um, if you're looking for any more inspiration, and of course you are for your gardening, get your hands on our latest copy of Grow to Eat magazine. This is the beautiful summer issue, which has got four months of your lunar guide in it. It's got the most delicious classic fruit pie recipe in it. Um, uh, there's little Gracie Child on the front. Uh, we show you how to make this guy on the front cover, uh, which is another cool holiday activity. Um, everything that you need to grow, gorgeous recipes, when to harvest, how to troubleshoot, it's all in your Grow to Eat magazine. Um, let's Bry and Cormons Bry, don't forget you'll find them at your local builders as well from bra sauces. Um, to the most yummy sausages. Ah, oh, the list goes on and on. In who um a two club rooster to gebruik? What is a two club rooster? It's one of those that you go and you put the boravas inside. Okay, and check out for the latest issue of the Gardener and Detainee, guys. It's everything you need for you and your November garden. From what to do now, great, great ideas. Of course, from all of the amazing people that contribute to our beautiful magazines. Um, don't forget to visit the blog um, where you will find loads more information. That's www.builders.co.za. And go to the YouTube channel as well where you can learn more and get some more cool DIY ideas and hints and tips to turn you into a green-fingered guru. All that's left for me to say is a huge, a huge thank you to the crew that is behind me. Um, the crew that's behind me uh, allow me to do this. Um, and it's not only this crew, but it's another whole office crew that are my supporters, uh, my carriers, uh, my inspiration, and the reason why we do what we do. Um, so to meet the crew, uh, Mason, swing round. Hello to Isolde, who is uh, on the questions and controlling the, uh, the the cords and making sure that Mason does not trip himself over and making sure that the YouTube uh, 
is coming through and you see you're in our garage and Meg's on the camera up there you are Meg's with the flag to make sure that I am looking in the right direction um, and when I don't look in the right direction she waves that flag like a million times guys and she waves it and then when I don't listen to her she then starts hitting the flag on top of that camera and right here in the back end the depths of the garage is our maestro Warwick this is our garage, guys. Uh, he's controlling all the screens. He's listening to you. Um, to all of you guys, Kevin is not here today. He's busy preparing for a DIY that he is going to be filming for you guys tomorrow. Um, and Mason, give me that camera. Give me the camera. I'm not really good at this, but um, however you do this, where are you? There's Mason. There's my man. There's Mason, my cameraman. Oh, man, dude. And you know, before every live, Mason, I'll give you this thing. I know it's worth a lot of money and I'll probably break it. Um, uh, before every live, uh, the final words out of Mason's mouth is, T, you've got this. Um, Mace, you're a rock star. I love you. Uh, guys, thank you all so, so much. Um, and thank you to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for walking this year with us. And um, May 2024 bring loads more gardening happiness to you and yours. Um, bring it on. Let's take it on, head on. Um, and we are the difference. You are the difference. Be safe. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Be kind to your pets. Um, and till next year, God bless you all and happy gardening. <laughs>